Welcome to the latest edition of the Pump Fake. We are completely done now with week one of the 2024 season wrapped up with Monday Night Football, the 49ers beating the Jets. We'll talk about that a little bit as well as several other things. I am Jared Bailey with you as always. If you are watching this on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you are listen- listening to this as a podcast, leave a review. Just make sure it's nice. I do read them. So make sure it's nice. It'll make me it'll make me happy. Joined today by my good friend, Doug Farrar, Athlon Sports, Sporting News, wherever you find football. Doug's probably there. Hi, my friend. How are you? What's up? How's it going? It's going good. I'm uh, happy to be kind of back in the swing of things. Uh, yeah. And uh, not, ju- not just talking, you know, speculation and, you know, what expectations and things like that. We can talk about things that have happened and are happening. So it's, uh, it's good to be back into that state of mind and uh, having games to talk about. It's so much fun. It's just like when you get the tape, you get the metrics, you start to put it all together, and it's like, oh, yes, again, finally, yes. thank God. Very much so. Um, so. So we can start real quick with the Monday night game. Um, I know that you've talked at length about the Jets' defense and are probably tired of talking about how bad the Jets' defense was. Oh, um, no, I'm just getting started, my friend. I am perfectly fine with talking about all of it because, <laughs> um, no. <laughs> What happened? I think that's probably my first question is, you know, this the Jets defense has been one of the better units in football. And they, you know, going into this game, news breaks that, OK, McCaffrey, we thought he was going to be limited. Now he's just not playing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think a lot of people, myself included, were like, all right, well, you know, maybe advantage Jets here if the offense can do anything to help the defense. When in reality, the defense couldn't really do much to give the offense a shot at putting up points. So. What uh? What happened? Because Jordan Mason looked like Marshall Falk and Emmett Smith rolled into one, uh, and the Jets' defense didn't have any answers. Well, I like that Aaron Rodgers was avoiding Charverius Ward like Charverius Ward was common sense. That did you see his passing <laughs> chart? It was all over. yeah, yeah, all the left side. Number yes. seven? No, 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 no. We don't want that. Which hey, yeah. Charverius is awesome. He's one of yeah. my top ten corners in the league. Um. Well. You remember, I mean, Kyle Shanahan is Mike Shanahan's son, and what was always said about Mike Shanahan, and justifiably so, in conjunction with Alex Gibbs, the offensive line and running backs coach, who is one of my idols. Got to meet him a couple of times at the combine, and I was really nervous. I met him at a Hooters. A Hooters? I met him at the Indianapolis Hooters about 10 years ago. <laughs> Talked to him for about five minutes. I'm just like, oh, my God, it's Alex Gibbs. That's but tremendous. what was said about Mike Shanahan's Broncos teams, You can the guy who just delivered your Amazon Prime package can go in there and rush for 150 yards. <laughs> no offense to Jordan Mason. He showed some things. But the 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 ill-preparedness. Okay, I've got some numbers here. <laughs> okay. uh, last year, only the Houston Texans ran more outside zone than the 49ers did. And Christian McCaffrey was by far the most prolific outside zone runner. The Niners in this game, uh, see, 22 outside zone runs. Only the Texans had more with 28. Go figure. And when you watch the outside zone snaps and how the Jets just completely lost the plot, lost contain, people were just running around with their heads cut off like, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Don't you understand the opponent you're playing? Don't you understand how to defend outside zone? I mean, if Salah came from the 49ers. You think that he would know that that's what they were going to do? You would know. You think that he would know. So that was that was disturbing. And then I'm looking at the and this this lines up with what you saw on the field. This and Jets defense. Oh my God! Blah blah blah. As long as Aaron Rodgers plays functionally, they're going to the Super Bowl because it's a top three <laughs> defense. Well, against the Niners, without Christian McCaffrey, and with all that off-season drama and Brandon IU dropping a touchdown pass and all that. Uh, the Jets were the eighth worst defense in week one in EPA Ooh. per play. They were the fifth worst defense in EPA per pass. Ugh. And rushing EPA, I imagine that was really good either. I was yeah, going to say, were, that's got to be near the bottom, I would assume. Uh, 12th worst. The Eagles okay. Were worst. Interesting. Interesting. Um, so I think what happened was, you know, Hassan Reddick. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, you know, John Frank, they, this team is too, um, I think it was Brees Hall who said they outplayed us. They just mm-hmm. out, they out executed us. They were tougher than us. These are not the kinds of things you want to hear from your players. And I think the jets were just not, they weren't ready. 
they weren't they weren't ready for this game. I, the more you watch it, the more you line the metrics up with the tape, which is what I try to do. The more it's like you okay. Hopefully it's just one of those waste pitches. You throw the thing out and you move on to, to game two. But there's a lot of disconcerting stuff. And I knew the off. I mean, Aaron Rodgers hasn't played since, you know, four snaps in week one. He's right. going to be rusty. That's understood. And he still made some Aaron Rodgers throws. You're like, oh, yeah, that guy. Yep. Okay. That's mm-hmm. where we went with all the nonsense because he's that good. But the defense, I would say the biggest surprise, maybe one of the biggest surprises of week one was just how badly that defense played and how ill-prepared they seemed for really – the Niners didn't do anything different. This wasn't, you know, they were they were who they are um, yeah. with whatever running back they have, and Kyle Shanahan got that from his dad. He knows how to do that. He knows how to throw anyone in there and get 150 yards. So um, you would think and hope for the Jets' sake that they'll be a little more I – don't, I don't know next week but or this week, but – uh, you'd hope they'd be a little more on the ball with all that stuff because that def- the defense, the defensive performance surprised me a lot. The offensive performance, like, well, a couple weeks worked the kinks out. <clears throat> that was not a top three defense. That was not a top 20 defense. That was bad. Now, I'll say this over the next four weeks, the quarterbacks that they face Will Levis, Jacoby Brissett, Bo Nick, Sam Darnold. So, like that, they'll have a chance to kind of get back in the swing of things. That's, that's at least three get wells, and yeah. uh, I know you, I know you think Sam gonna, is going to turn into. I, a I have some thoughts on like the whole Sam Darnold, and I understand that. Uh, but yeah, that that could be a, that's a get well month. So yeah, they get well, <laughs> that, that's that's a lot of that's uh, you know fields full of flowers. We'll see how yeah. it goes. The other thing was the uh, time of possession to me because if you look at the uh, 49ers drives. First of all, they held the ball for about 39 minutes to the Jets 21. That's not it great. Certainly felt like it. <laughs> that, it did feel like it. There was a time where like the it was like midway through the third quarter, the Jets hadn't had the ball outside of a kneel down since like 527 left in the second. Like they were just getting bullied all over uh, all over the defensive side of the ball. So I'm looking now at the length of drives for the 49ers. So each team exchanged three and out to start the game and then the 49ers had a field goal and then from then on out Nine plays, 12 plays, 12 plays, 11 plays, eight plays, 11 plays, five plays, end of game. Like, they just buzzsawed their way down the field consistently. Um, And he mentioned a few throws that Aaron Rodgers made. There was a throw on that 12-play drive that led to a touchdown where the 49ers were playing zone coverage and Garrett Wilson snuck behind. Um, I cannot remember who the defender was. Um, But, I mean, there was some throws that he made. It was like, okay, yeah, there's still some of the, uh, the old Aaron Rodgers in there. Um, and I think we'll see, you know, them find more of that in this, you know, this get well month. Um, well, just so- one thing about the drive lengths and the sustaining elements of what the Niners do. Uh, Jordan Mason had 28 rushing attempts. He had one negative run. Wow. That's impressive. That's also an indictment of that defense. I mean, I, hey, you don't need me to tell you that Kyle Shanahan is really good at designing an offense. Sure. But- just the ability to – and uh, Dominic Pooney, their new right guard. That's it's tremendous. He's tremendous. tremendous. So you have 28 attempts, one negative run. You're going to own the clock. That's kind of how that works. <laughs> and I think that's going to be – I mean, he brought up Pooney. I think he's going to be vital to what they do because the entire thing with the 49ers has been, okay, their offensive line kind of stinks, especially that right side. Well, you know, the right guard is going to make Colton McKibbitts look a lot better at right tackle. And as long as you have somebody over there that can, you know, hold their own, then, you know, you might have something there. Um, and highway, the only- 70, highway 71 doing the whole Walter Jones thing, hold out, lift, lift a couple yeah. of and come in and just dominate. Didn't give <laughs> us a pressure of any kind. Um, and um, I think that the only other negative run they would have had was that wanky reverse thing that they did to Debo that almost lost yeah. 10, but only lost three because he's Debo and got some yards back. So they were just, they were dominant in all facets of the game. Well, Kyle uh, will get cute at times. Sometimes sure. he was a veteran. That's just the way it is. Mass That's the way it time. is. Um, so you and I are going to play a little game real quick. It's just called I'm over it. And I'll, I'll kind of go first and let you, uh, just to, you know, give you an idea of what I'm looking for here. So it's just something that like, either we're tired of seeing the discourse we're tired of something of that nature. So you brought up Sam Darnold 
Lord bless Sam Darnold. I have zero against Sam Darnold as a guy. I used to drive the Sam Darnold bandwagon when he was in Carolina. When they started off 3-0 and that year, I was making a lot of taking a lot of victory laps that ended up biting me in the butt. Oh, so you're you're bitter and bruised is what you're saying. I guess. maybe maybe I understand. I understand. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. But this is Sam Darnold on his now fourth team and yeah. we have people in every aspect of what you and I do for a living whether you know it might be uh, I think you know Mina Kimes and uh I think Dan Hanzu's uh said that they were going to make the playoffs. It's just I'm over it. I'm so over this whole like talking about Sam Darnold as if he's a guy going into his second year that is still a prospect that we're trying to pull something out of. Like this is year seven of Sam Darnold, team number four. And look, this might be the best that we ever see him look because he's in a really good system with Kevin O'Connell, whom I know that you love and adore very much. Yeah. Um, but and he's coming off a game in which he looked good against a bad Giants team. He threw, you know, a, a nice looking five yard touchdown or whatever it was to Justin Jefferson. Okay. Which Give was on fourth and two from the three yard line at the end of a 99 yard drive, 104 if you count penalties. And he had a 44 yard uh, backside corner route to Justin Jefferson on that drive that actually beat the overhead guy. You couldn't see Jefferson's catch because he threw it with such so much mustard on it that the mm-hmm. overhead person couldn't get their camera over in time. He had two throws of over 20 air yards and a 104 yard drive. And you know what? So, I hope he gets fourth and two. That's a three yard. Okay. Yeah, I get it. It's a little slant in and he beat Deontay Banks because it was four strong to the right. And that's what O'Connell does. He just places your defense and makes you screw up. But let's let's get some context here. Sure. And, and look, Sam Darnold has consistently done that throughout his career. He'll make a few throws again. They're like, God damn, that was a nice throw. Give it about three weeks before he goes 19 of 37 with three picks and shows us the other side of the Sam Darnold coin. I, I, I honestly, I hope Sam Darnold kicks ass this year. And I hope the Vikings make the playoffs. And I hope Sam Darnold gets a big deal somewhere else. I sincerely hope that. But what I'm tired of is that we have to like pretend that all 32 starting quarterbacks have the chance to be stars. They don't like we can point out that some of these guys are going to be bad. And I think that Sam Darnold has consistently shown us that he's not going to be a long term starter. But every year we seem to do this thing with Sam. We're just like, oh, maybe Sam Darnold, this could be the year like this is team four. He's probably not going to be a superstar, but let's let's pump the brakes a little. I get it. And I never made, you know, I was never one of these uh, people. Oh, you know. In the right situation, Sam Darnold could be a top five because look at the dominant mm-hmm. physical. Well, and you go back to his USC tape, his mechanics were horrible. His mechanics were horrible through a lot of his NFL career. And he turned the I ball think, over a lot of USC too. Yeah, I just think that with O'Connell and not, it's not like this quarterback and this play caller in this scheme. It was, and I wrote a piece uh, for SB Nation that's going up tomorrow morning. And O'Connell went through his three favorite throws that Donald made and just the entire situation. Um, it's more like, you know, Justin Jefferson's on board. O'Connell's on board. Everyone's on board with this guy. And it's the, it's the, it's the culture of belief that you get in a quarterback. Whereas you got Malik neighbors going, I don't know what the hell was going on out there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm sure. That, I'm sure one of us. Are like, well, I'm sure it'll get better. Uh, Deshaun Watson's teammates are like, no comment. Yep, yeah, that's fair, and that's completely and fair. You engender sure. a culture of belief, and you're you're on a one year, ten million dollar deal. Your your rookie supposed star is out for the season. I mean, mm. I think he handled it incredibly well. When I sure. got in, I looked, watched the tape. Read the quotes. I like to read quotes when I'm doing tape pieces. I like to get a context beyond whatever I think. Because whatever I think, I, I didn't, for the most part, I didn't talk to the guy right after the game. I don't know. I don't know what the what they were trying. As the late neighbor said, I don't know what the hell was going on out there. Um, so when I get that context, I'm not saying, oh, Sam Donald's going to dominate. Cause I don't know. But I just, I liked the way everything lined up. He made a ton of big time throws in different situations. I mean, you're pinned on a great punt by uh, your own one yard line in the second quarter. It's seven to three. And yeah, I mean, the Giants aren't going to score 20, maybe ever, (laughs) but 
in that situation and and O'Connell saying, yeah, we're going to throw the deep corner to Jefferson. We're going to throw this over here. We're going to on fourth and two, we can take the, the three and just get out of here because it's freaking Daniel. It, it, it's the Giants. They're not going to score. But O'Connell was like, no, I want you to close this out because you earned it because you took us all the way downfield. It's these little sort of intricate things that I start to look at. I, I mean, we got in sports, we overuse intangibles so much. It's oh, like, yeah. When I say intangibles, it means I have no idea what I'm talking about. I don't want to say intangibles, but those little intrinsic things that tie an offense and a team together. And, and saying, you know what? Maybe may, maybe we look back on this in January and Sam Darnold had his Geno Smith year, and I'm eating or my Nick words. Year. Or is Nick Foles here? Or is Nick Foles here? Who knows, man? We'll Who see. Knows? And I, I sincerely hope he has his Geno Smith year. It's just I think that we we're gonna do this with other quarterbacks in the future too. Guys who have been bad who go to different situations. They're like, I don't know. Uh, we're doing it with we have people that are doing it with Daniel Jones still, who stinks and showed us through one of the Ooh, worst. Inter- I don't I don't think anybody's saying that he's gonna be great, but um our uh, mutual friend Greg Rosenthal, he was on this very program a few weeks ago, and he's he's always been a little bit higher on Daniel Jones than the uh, the average, I would say. Um and after the uh, Texans preseason game, when he when Jones threw that awful pick six, you know, Greg was pointing out a few other throws that he made that were, you know, pretty good throws. So uh not to throw Greg under the bus or anything like that. No, we love Greg. 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 Yeah, yeah. Um but well, Chase, you know, Chase Daniel has that new show with uh, I think it's on FS1 where he's yeah the uh, the facility I think is what it's called and he does great analysis he was like yeah there were all these terrible throws but there was this one great throw that he made that were and that, that, that I think that that Doug is my point right there is that it's like, okay yeah one good throw and then I yes. put up a reel of seven different throws a couple of days ago on Twitter which got like six hundred thousand views saying okay you cannot run an offense with this guy. This is not yeah. a functional NFL quarterback. I'm sorry. You know, me and Werner Ram talk about quarterback play a lot. And um, he, one thing that he said to me like a few years ago, I don't know why, but it stuck out to me. He's like, just about every quarterback that starts a game in the NFL can make a couple throws a game that'd be like, okay, that was a pretty solid throw. It's what they do around those throws sure. that can decide if they can be long term answers. So, yeah, I mean, Greg not, Cosell not the is, answer. Yeah, yeah, Greg Cosell is, we've talked, you know, draftable quarterbacks for 15 years and, you, know, mm-hmm. you can take any guy he said this years ago you can take any guy's 20 best plays and put them together in a reel and all of a sudden he's a first round pick yeah it's all the crap in between you know how much of that is there it's it's mm-hmm. it's quarterback is a reductive art in that way in that you really are looking to eliminate the bad stuff more than looking to amplify the good yeah because the good the bad stuff will kill you more than the good stuff will save you absolutely uh, is there anything after week one or just as of right now that you're just already tired of? I'm tired of people people saying that Kirk Cousins played like crap. Like this is some sort of referendum on Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins, they should never have put him in that game. He was not healthy. He was not mm-hmm. – he did not have a functional lower body. He had – I'm going to – all right. Uh not one of 20, Cousins' 25 attempts had the benefit of play action. On 24 of his 25 passing okay. attempts, he stayed in the pocket. All 25 of those attempts came on shotgun or pistol. Not one passing attempt from under center. It was as if there was a label on QB1 that said, do not scramble. This guy was <laughs> not ready. He was not. You can take nothing, nothing whatsoever about future Kirk Cousins in Atlanta from that game. So. And- you know, so that that's kind of the the inverse, and it's Darnold's predecessor in Minnesota, yeah. um, saying that, well, I, you know, he's always mediocre, and he's on. Kirk Cousins has been a really, really good professional, above average quarterback for a long time. He didn't have any legs. Come on, stop it. And if that's the case, though, then we can look at this from both sides. Like we can we all clown the pick of Michael Penix Jr. Um, but maybe Atlanta knew, okay, we're probably going to need this guy at some point. But at the same time, if you knew that going in, why did you give Kirk Cousins four years? What was it, $145 million? 180. If you won't count, 180. Good God. All right. Why'd you give him that? Well, if that's the case, why did you give Penix, what, like one game in the preseason? Mm-hmm. That too. I mean, the whole thing is just a clown show. Sorry, Phil. Yeah. And watching, I mean, I obviously as a Steelers fan, watching that game, yeah. like – 
he didn't look comfortable. Like he looked like, all right, he probably knew it was like, all right, I'm not going to be able to be too mobile this game. That's why they went almost exclusively pistol. Um, where well, they he's went. one of the more prominent brute action corner quarterbacks in the NFL. Has oh, he's been, made, that's what he made the living off of in Minnesota in doing. Yeah. Michigan State. Um, so when I see that, and I see that interception where he's, you know, was it Hayward played his ass off, by the way. Hayward, pa- Hayward had a good about. game. Hayward was dominant. But whoever got him, where, you know, cousin, you just move two steps to the left and you make that throw. So yeah. don't tell me that – if you know, I'm over people saying that Kirk Cousins was always mediocre and the Falcons had a you know, but we don't know because that was not Kirk Cousins. That was that was not Kirk. Trust. I, I and I don't know like how long this is going to go on. I don't know where he is health wise, and no one's right. saying anything about it. But that you do not need an X-ray or an MRI to tell you that he is not ready uh, to to play quarterback in the NFL. You just watch the tape. There's your MRI right there. The tape. Yeah, that was like 35% of Kirk Cousins. Now, I've long been a Kirk defender. I think that, like, especially last around. year. Yeah. I came around. Last year, I mean, he was on pace for around 5,000 yards, 38 oh, touchdowns. I mean, yeah, yeah, he was killing it. Absolutely. So yeah. I've long been a Kirk long been a Kirk guy, and I hope that uh, things get better for him in Atlanta. Uh, we talked about you know, this guy. We don't, we don't usually castigate players if they're injured. I'm saying – whether he was on an injury report or not, let's maybe put him in that yes. for now because that was that, not a healthy guy. That's fair. Um, we talked about this guy already. I'm I'm already tired of Daniel Jones. Like the the Giants have long been like one of the more boring teams in football, and now like when they had Saquon Barkley, at least they had some fun aspect to them. Now they're just bad and extremely boring. Like you can be bad. How and much you, fun do you think Brian Dable's having and Joe Schoen and certainly John Mira? Yeah. Saquon goes and just whoops ass with the Eagles, and we're left with this guy. I was going to say, they're working with Noah Gray, who came out of Oklahoma last year. They think they signed Devin Singletary in the offseason. You know, it's there's not really a lot to be outside of Malik Neighbors. Uh, I mean, that the, the kid, yeah, I like Tyron Tracy. He was a receiver at Iowa for a while. He was actually okay. a, productive, he was a productive receiver at Iowa which I didn't think was possible. And then he became a running back. I was going to say, Iowa, I mean, they're like the New York Giants of college football where they, you know. Kind of. Sell yeah, kind of. Um, but outside of Malik Neighbors, there's not a lot to be excited about on this offense. Daniel Jones threw an awful pick six to Andrew Van Ginkle, who just like stuck his hand out coming off the edge and caught it and walked into the end the zone. The worst part of that, the worst part of that play, and I can't believe they didn't scout that. He was – the pick six he had against Sam Howell when he was with the Dolphins last year, it was the same play. I lined oh, wow. him up on Twitter a couple days ago because I remember writing about that play and I was like, Van Ginkle, this guy's really good. Yeah. He is. Um, it was the same. He was sort of half off ball, half sort of stacked backer outside. Mm-hmm. And he just, right right when the quick flat pass happened, he just, he knew. And I was reading the Vikings transcripts for the Darnold piece I did. And uh, they asked Van Ginkle about, like, well, how did you know? He's like, well, I've already got two of those. I'm not going to tell you because I might get three someday. <laughs> Just to, I mean, the whole offense was, well, it was, it was broken. And Jones is to the point now where he can't, he'll, he'll throw to the wrong side of a receiver on a simple slant or a drag. Mm. I mean, he's never been good. No. The fact that Dave Gettleman <clears> – <throat> Took him sixth overall in 2019, basically off a good senior bowl week. But that's that's Gettleman. That's why he's not in the league anymore. <laughs> um, but this guy had third to fourth round tape at Duke, and then he had a DVA of uh, less than minus ten in each of his first three years. No quarterback who has ever done that in the history of DVOA, which goes back to 1989, has ever succeeded. Of course, one of them, Sam Darnold. So you never know. Oh my, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> is Sam Darnold gonna Sam break Darnold's gonna, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not in the hive. I'm just sort of around the hive. I I pulled up to the hive and I got my radio on and I'm sort of going, hmm. <laughs> not in the hive. I'm around okay. the hive. That's fair. Wouldn't it be something yeah, if Sam I'm, Darnold- just, I'm just like, come on. <laughs> well, here's the thing I find interesting. Brian Dable got the Giants head coaching job to a large degree because the Giants knew they had a quarterback who might be irredeemable. And mm. what did Dable do with Josh Allen? He took the the guy, the, the Bronco who could not be bucked, and he bucked him, and he turned him into kind of what he is today. 
Well, between Daniel Jones and Drew Locke, skill set wise, who is far more <laughs> like Josh Allen? I'm just saying. Yeah, I I'd make that move now. You're uh, not yeah. really sure. your defense. I mean, <clears throat> the transition from Wink Martindale to Shane Bowen, and Shane Bowen did a pretty good job in in Tennessee. But one of the reasons they went with Denard Wilson is they wanted to play more press, and Bowen doesn't blitz a lot. He doesn't play press a lot. He doesn't play man a lot. Well, the Giants have set up their whole defense to do three things, mm-hmm. blitz, press, and play man, because that's what Wink wanted. So they're not going to be very good. You might as well. And this is a team that was openly trying to find another quarterback on camera for HBO in the offseason. They couldn't have made it more obvious. No. Go to the lock in there, see if you can turn him into a functional backup. Daniel Jones is done. <laughs> yeah, cap, I, I, his dead cap next year is something like $22 million. You're you're backing out of that. You're done. So absolutely, you're not make it interesting. Get him out I, of there. I 100 percent agree. And by the way, their defense couldn't stop a nosebleed, especially in the run yeah. game. JP Acosta uh, posted a, a little clip of their defense, and man, like they're just getting eaten alive in the C gap during, in the run game all game. Like it was bad. Save Dexter Lawrence. Somebody please trade Dexter. De- Dexter Lawrence is the best defensive player in the National Football League. Wow, that is a statement. Watch that is, that is a statement. Watch watch what he did. <laughs> I feel watch like that could be. I feel like there's a few <laughs> teams that could probably offload some stars that aren't going anywhere. Like I wouldn't be surprised to see like Dexter Lawrence like go to a team that's a contender for like a pair of high end draft picks or maybe just a bundle of picks. Maybe the Raiders get rid of Devontae Adams at some point. Like uh, uh, sexy Dexy is getting edge numbers. He's getting like Max Crosby, TJ Watt numbers as a legitimate mm-hmm. over center and one tech nose tackle. He's he's incredible. You're not There's gonna never hear been anyone like him, as far as I know. Incredible stuff. Um, I do want to. Uh, so yeah, I'm sick have, of the giant. I'm sick of the Giants in general. I'm tired of the Giants too. Lock I'm, in there and just stop it. Everyone talks about how boring the Saints are. I think the Giants are a lot more boring than the Saints. I agree. You know what? I came into the season saying that the Saints are the most boring team in football. I was wrong. It is the Giants by a long shot. By a long shot. Um, The kickoff has a lot of dialogue around it right now. And, you know, we saw. I I couldn't possibly care less about the dynamic kickoff. Yeah. Like, it's fine. I, I. Nothing. I don't have a strong opinion on it one way or the other. I know a lot of people want to see it get changed even more um, because, you know, there's still a lot of touchbacks because, you know, going from the 25 to the 30 teams don't seem to care that much. So I said, you know, let's get real weird. Kick the ball out of the end zone. Then the receiving team gets the ball at your one. Good luck. What do you think? Sure. I'm fine. Uh, So um, so, it, it was like there are certain terms that really irk me in games the uh independent neurotrauma consultant like when oh. everyone looks like they have it we have to make sure to know that the nfl is not doing any hokey pokey with it. Yeah, right. about that um but now when i hear dynamic kickoff i'm like i'm already oh. tired of hearing that too yeah just call it call it the kickoff we Shut don't need all these, all these fun words about it somebody did uh come up with a good idea though um or at least a fun <laughs> idea uh, if the ball goes out of the back of the end zone, it's a safety against the kicking team. I think that's funny. I like that. I, I like, like that, that a lot. We need more safeties. We do. Oh, well, tell that to Seattle, who just exactly. uh, Seattle who just, got right up and yeah, who said, were, "Hold yeah. our gear. We'll give you more safeties." They were really pinned back a lot. They were. Um, one other idea on the uh, kickoff that was shared with me: uh, if you score a touchdown, the other team. This is about like just abolishing kickoff. So if you score a touchdown, the team who's just on defense starts at the 20 if uh, a team scores a field goal then the team who held them to a field goal gets the ball at the 35 i think that's kind of fun if they were to do away with kickoffs like you reward the team for keeping a team out of the end zone i actually think that's a great idea i think that's a very cool idea uh, you know me i'm all about defense reward absolutely absolutely is there anything else that you're tired of (laughs) um shoot I think I'm tired of I think I'm tired of the Panthers already. Um, yeah, what's what's going on there? I think Bryce Young might just be bad. I think that's kind of the conclusion I'm coming to. Bryce Young might just be bad. Well, he it's funny because he had to open against the Saints, and he was awful, just mm-hmm. horrible. <clears throat> 
And it, I, I mean, I'm not knocking Dave Canales. I think he's a perfectly good coach. But the whole, you know, like, yes, he helped Gino. Yes, he helped Baker. Did you watch Baker Mayfield with Liam Cohen yesterday? Hey, how about Monday, Baker Mayfield? Holy shit. The best quarterback in the NFL week one. Led the NFL, NFL EPA plus CQA. EPA, EPA per drop, like everything. Just demolish. And it's the commanders, I know. But Jack Del Rio isn't there anymore. I was going to say, these aren't the Jack Del Rio commanders. Now. Somewhat seriously, you know. As that was a Dan Quinn defense at the end of the day. Come on now. Um. Yeah. You know, they got well, – we've got two new guards. We've got Xavier Leggett. we got uh, the tight end from Texas. Now we got Dave Canales, who did these miracle acts. With Traded for Deontay him. Johnson. Yeah. Who was the target on the, the opening pick. Mm-hmm. And I find it interesting, and I'm, I'm making this note. I'm doing a thing for uh, Athlon tomorrow, uh, this being Tuesday, about uh, the Dante's Divine Comedy, the nine layers of hell. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you have Limbo, you have like, okay, is it Bryce Young, maybe Daniel Jones, 50 feet of crap, to quote Brad Pitt and Moneyball, and then maybe Deshaun Watson. I think... <laughs> I think Bryce Young is starting to descend, and I find it interesting. And so, I'm, so th- those three quarterbacks are my focus for this piece. And I'm noticing with, uh, and I talked to Stefanski when he was up here for the Seahawks Browns preseason game, and I asked him like, "How do you even know what Deshaun Watson's potential is when you haven't seen it? When he's, you know, suspensions and injuries and blah blah blah. He had that whole year. He was just, you know, benched every game for off field reasons, which of course are now rearing their heads again." Yeah, uh, And I've noticed that when coaches have not completely given up on a bad quarterback, they're like, well, it's on him and he has to improve. And Canales went really, really deep, like macro into that first interception where Deontay Johnson was the, it wasn't, a, I think it was an in cut. And he said, yeah, he had space. Bryce has to see that. So when a coach is like fed up with a quarterback, but he hasn't given up, it's on the quarterback. I noticed uh, when Stefanski talked to me, when he talked after the Cowboys game, and when Brian Dable talked both after um, the, the Vikings game and the next day, it's like, we all have to get better. It's mm-hmm. about all 11. It's on all of us. When you've given up on a quarterback, it's on the team. So but you do this for a while, you start to figure a few things out. That, <laughs> that's a, that's these, a code these yeah, that's a code for you. Very good. If, if they haven't given up yet, it's on the quarterback. If they have given up, we all have to be better. All of us have to get better. All right. That's something I'm going to keep an eye on in these in these pressers from now on. That's, that's Just put a pin in it. Yeah. 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 Little, little tea leaves. Um, Doug, I always enjoy our conversations and enjoy doing stuff like this with you. Uh, Same here, man. 